because it's not going to get in and brought her back into it. <laughs> brought her back to the dark place. I don't know. Don't ask John about the chairs. They They'll are give you bad advice. Chairs. They're too long. <laughs> this was the last meeting. Oh, they're here. Where? I can put you on the I only have a knob. Is it a knob that you create? I'm going to end up undoing the chair and call. Right? <laughs> I'll have John's look about it. I can't tell. Uncle Baby. Henry. <coughs> so I just went back to work and I've been off for six months. So he's like, I'm trying to get back into the routine. Daycare's closed, so my mom's watching him. And with the school's closed down, I have my older boys mm. week on week off, you know, because we're on our summer schedule. And oh, so, I didn't even think about job custody stuff. Yeah. We just that throws a whole nother thing on him. We just agreed to do it that way. We didn't have to. We could have waited, oh, but it's yeah. not based weird. on my husband's character, though, not having two teenage boys in his house. Well, I'm every sure. Day. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, and they like coming down, you know, we get to spend extra time. Yeah. But they're doing their online learning. And then my daughter's doing her online learning, and it's different from what they're doing. And it's just their schedules are just chaotic. Yeah. Off at night, yeah. Trying to learn this new job. And, and where are you at? Oh, no. Yeah, I was at Sugarfee when I started. Yeah, I started on the first. Yeah. You liking it? I love it. Oh, good. I love it. Well, good. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I know they think highly of you. Um, my I don't know about Mike. I mean, I'm sure he does. <laughs> Sound really bad. Um, well, I'm not on the transit side. I'm on the mobility side. Oh. So like, um, construction projects and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm an analyst. Really? Yeah. Like, you know, like my boss is amazing. Which one's your boss? Frank Regan. He's the region three manager. And he manages everything for our region. What's going on? Hello, how are you? I'm good, and you? I don't know. I probably need to sit in the corner. <laughs> Back in the corner. In the corner so that we can be socially distanced. Um, I had a meeting earlier, and this lady walked in, and she's very conscious of it. and. She has some health issues, so she's like in full uh, ast like astronaut gear. And um, <laughs> our executive director walks in. He's like, I'm sitting way away from everyone. He put his chair right next to her. For me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you need more than one box? There's um, 50 in there? No, this should be good. This is going to be nice. So um, one thing that I do not know the the it's only draft rules. Um, so uh, they're talking about for the single use masks. That was a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow. Yeah, um, well, for the cloth ones, if if we end up having to require people to wear masks, mm -hmm. we also are going to have to requ be required to provide training for them so that they understand okay. um, the uh, carbon monoxide thing that might happen. And you know that single use masks are only to be used until they're wet on the inside. Once your breath causes them to be wet, they should be discarded and another one taken. Can I get another box? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need another one after that. Yeah. yeah. Talk just a little bit because yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the executive orders expired and she doesn't have the authority to extend it 30 days without legislative approval. It doesn't matter what she thinks, though. The, the Constitution yeah, outlines the law of how it has to work. And so we're done with it. Okay. I mean, it's from a true word. Yeah, my writers want to wear them if they're available. Yeah, I'm not saying it's because I you will, want to. No. Yeah, so we, most of our folks are um, older or disabled. So we're doing a lot of medical runs like dialysis and stuff. So 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Especially with who I have writing tomorrow. <laughs> I have to have that one on every time. <laughs> oh, hi, Roy. I, I can't even. So, in order to socially distance you, <laughs> I forget. Masks. Oh, yeah. 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 Even Cheryl, yes. you know that the governor's extension is unconstitutional uh, yeah. and, and void, right? Yes. But I mean, if people want to practice it personally, that's cool, but we don't have a policy on it. My understanding is that it can apply to government employees. Yep. The, the executive order can, but her extension has to be approved by legislature per the Constitution, and she didn't have that done because we're not in session. Yeah. And we don't have a policy covering it, so. Hey, honey, how are you? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to take a minute. We're just trying to, um, you know, adhere to the. It is. We don't have a policy on it. We don't have to follow it. So, I mean, if people want to. Right. John, I just, I need you to follow me around and keep me up to date on all the news and all, to be honest. I don't have time for all this. That's why. And if you're wrong with what I say, I might misinterpret it and you might think that I'm an idiot if you get caught in the wrong understanding. Oh, I'm very good at it. Um, okay, so we can have people following it. Well, no, people cannot come. We don't have a policy on it. The governor still is null and void. Okay. Are we going to Constitution Article 10, Section 8? So when did it expire? On I April 6th, 30 days after she declared it in March. I'm talking about, I have oh, an email. If they had any power, they would actually be finding people right now, but they're not for everybody who's opening. And so right now they have empty threats and everybody's finding out how empty they are. Right. I'm sure that there's the teachers. The police department is going to enforce education. Because if there was a law to enforce, Roseburg Police Department would be enforcing it. Right. And they don't want to get sued, so they're not. Right. So why? So there's another restaurant that opens there. Gilberto, Gilberto Casey's. Oh, Casey's is open. I can't remember the other one. And then because of Casey's, we've got the over in Coos Bay. A bakery is open. Um, three salons are now open: Winchester Salon, Pesos uh, Barbershop. Not his name. Uh, barbershop's name. His his name is Peso, and he's a barber. <laughs> I don't remember his name, over by Sportsman's Warehouse. Um, hopefully, hold up for people overnight. Oh, I know. Yeah. The Cottage Grill Golf Course was serving drinks in their bar last week. So, what is Executive Order 2012? 2012 was the first one, and she extended it last week. Well, so due to the governor's executive order 2012, there will be no public interest at the stadium. It is available for view at the public viewing room. See, and that's where we need to set a policy. Perfect. Let's do it. To agenda item one. Well, we can't do actionable things on a last minute, but we can totally set it for June. We can. And I think that our policy, <laughs> our poli I think our policy is covering executive orders from the governor should follow the letter, letter to the T of the Constitution. 
and not be more aggressive than because anything more aggressive than what the governor does in an executive order is going to be harmful to the people that we're trying to serve. I think so, but I'm a radical. I know. It's hard I'm just sitting here watching this. Hey, you know, I need money. <laughs> Then switch her chairs because she might. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm gonna have people. It's gotta be accidental. Yeah, we're um, having some issues right now moving forward with our fireworks display. And that's all I'll call it is a display. That's the legal jargon that I've been told to use is display and not show. It's not a festival. Oh, you're not selling them, you're looking to. No, I put the fireworks show on every year. Oh, okay. And um Well if you can't do it, let's start shooting yeah, so. Yeah, okay. I'm a free market person. Oh um, we're not allowed we don't have them in our possession and they are not delivered till the morning of. Oh that's dumb. Yeah, there's only one distributor for our state, Western Firework out of Candy and I could I so should have gotten my license. You can still do it. No, it, like it, it would have been code? easier. Yeah, when I, when I was in the military, I'll be good. Is what I did. But I don't want to. I just wanted to because I could order stuff like that in FFL. I could get like a fully auto mm. machine gun presser without having to wait for the whole 12 months for the background check for the ATL. Mm. Just have already done it to give you the FFL. I figured you would appreciate. We changed the flag out for the shorter flag. Oh. We found the shorter one. Nice. Yeah, so now we can get the bigger one. We can get it mounted on a pole. Perfect. You know, the ones that have the light that yes. shines up to them so you can have them up all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But we should still take it down after dark so we can save the taxpayers electricity money. Oh, you're funny. Wow. I believe our flag should be the 24 7 channel. Yeah, I'm all for it if we were a 24 of 7 business, but we're not. Yet. Oh my god. Oh, it's Nike. <laughs> got a case of the dropsies? Yeah. Is this on my hand? It's a case of the Mondays. That is a Monday. It's just a tired Monday because it was a long weekend. <sighs> Yesterday was the first day I haven't worked in so long. I've been working every day, all day long. Non-stop. How was your mother's day then? So good. I had my whole family over, my mom and dad, and my children, and my brother and their family. And that dance thing that joins you. And you? Good. Yeah. We went and saw my parents. They live down in Canyonville. Yeah. How is your little baby baby? Oh, I'm just going to say it. I've been out there for six months and I just started my new job. And my daycare shut down. So he's like on this all chatty wampus schedule and he doesn't understand what's going on because mom's yeah. not there and grandma's there all the time. and. He doesn't get to see Rihanna, and then you know my husband, my ex-husband, and I decided to go to summer schedule for the older kids. So I have the older boys. He's gone week off. Oh wow! So and he's uh -huh. like, when they're gone, he's like, where are they? Like, what is going on? <laughs> where are my brothers at? Yeah. And doing the online schooling, and it's just our schedule is a bit crazy. Yeah, it's been kind of weird. Even just having one that, and she's a teenager, it's been really weird. And of course, her uh, computer died, won't turn on. Oh, no. Yeah, so she was doing really good with, well, since they took away the Zoom meeting classes, she gets her homework assignment Monday morning, and it's done before noon. And then she gets another one on Wednesday, and it's done before noon, and she has yeah. nothing but time. So, yeah. The boys, so they're they're in Springfield, so theirs are still in 
faster videos. So they're there on schedule times. My daughter's doing an ingenuity issue with South Umpa. And she works and hers is at, at your own pace. So she gets off work at like 10 o'clock at night, comes home and does her school till three in the morning. Oh, wow. And then uh, the boys are at it all morning. What did you call it? Ingenuity? Ingenuity. Ingenuity. Wow, that would be. Destiny needs something more challenging. And I like to get, you know, so she's got, well, the nice thing for her is when they made that rule that if you were passing your time to school stuff, you got to pass. So everything that she's doing right now is going to get her credits towards next year. She's senior next year. So everything she's doing now, she if she completes all of it, then she'll only have to take two classes at senior year. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm really good. And then, so a lot of our teachers told her, well, we can put you in and have you start your college courses next year if you want to do that and do a half a day, or we'll pick you up to lunch, just do your two required, we'll put you in on the, the college courses, and then she'll have to come down and she can still get out of the end and work yeah, 40 hours a week. So, that's what the thing that Destiny is the most bummed about is the, the loss of the college. Mm -hmm. It's the first time she was oh, taking no, the no, advanced placement right classes. And then she yeah, right shut down right. and lose the credit. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and it's hard so to do a chemistry class without a teacher. <laughs> and so, if, if, right. If the emergency right, prevents right. so many, so many from three I'm supposed to make quarters. a video of myself mm -hmm. doing something, something. They can do it with three kids. And so I'm like, but <laughs> every time matter. something comes up, there's a video that's science related. Like, well, there's your science lesson for the day. You got that. She did not call an emergency form. And then you do it. So there's your PE credit for the day. So it expires in April 6th. We try to make it fun, you know, and not joke out of it. Just Even if it was March 31st that she declared it, May 1st would have been your 30 days. So I think that uh, we should ask people if they want to practice social distancing and provide it if they do, but not enforce it because it's not a legal extension. You mean like requiring masks in the vans and on the buses? Right. There's no reason to require it because unless we set a policy, because right now the Constitution says that she cannot extend it without two thirds unless the, the three fifths. Which she didn't get unless she put in the executive order, right? She and could have called an emergency session. She chose not to. She didn't even ask. Yeah, she didn't. Yeah. She just said, I am the queen of Oregon and I say what I say and I because I said it. Yes. Well, and really, it's a it's a liability because if we ended up denying somebody something because of our social distancing, they can sue us because following an order is not a defense for the Supreme Court. So we should do our bare minimum of our mandatory, which was ending April seventh. We have masks. If you would like them, masks. Masks. But I look so terrible in a mask. <laughs> I just, I just, it ruins my whole book. So I'm gonna skip that part. Is Mark coming soon? Uh, Mark on the phone. I have not heard from Mark. Have you heard from Mark this week? No, I have not. Okay. Okay, so it's cool. It's uh. I don't know if we got done in 60 seconds or so. Did you? And Carmen. So you have 100% electric. Is that hard yeah. to? Uh, yeah. Recharge it to get somewhere, or do you just pretty much run town and it works at home? I just okay. use it for around town and at home. I haven't had it long enough to get over what they call range anxiety. Yeah. And I didn't buy that. My sister bought it for me for my birthday because she really felt like I should have that experience. <laughs> range anxiety? <laughs> no, it's not a Tesla. If, if, if she gives me her other Tesla, she has two Teslas. If she gives me the other one, my payments will be much higher than 125. Mm -hmm. oh. So it's it's uh, it's old and the battery doesn't go very far. It has a 55 mile range on it. But if I'm in town, I can drive mm -hmm. all day long. It just builds up more power. I can go home with more power than I left it. Wow. And if I take like the old road to Myrtle Creek, if I go over the stagecoach road or over Roberts Mountain and then down Dole Road, 
um, I can turn around and pretty much come back the same way. But it all has to do with how much you use your brakes and how fast you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it loses like five miles of range as soon as I hit the air conditioning button. Right. Oh. Worth it. But <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. But five years ago, you told me how how terrible electric cars were. Yeah. And now I've seen the new um, documentary by Michael Moore. And if you haven't seen it, we should see it. Does it, it talk about how they go and still dig all the lithium yes, out and tear yes. everything apart? John, all the you would be, and wires and everything. you guys, I know you guys don't want to have anything to do with Michael Moore, but he has destroyed the entire right. environmental community with that documentary. It's, you will love it. It'll give you all of the things that you, and now we know what you need. Now you know. We've told you before. Now you accept. No, you didn't. Well, it's because he, he didn't just say it. He gave me proof. Oh. Are you feeling okay? Oh, yeah. With a mask if you'd like it. I got one in the car, brother. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's 531. Uh, let's call the meeting to order and start with uh, okay. John Burton. Jennifer Burns. Sarah Thompson. Mike Baker. Scott Stone. All directors are present. And Sarah Keely is with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. agenda. <laughs> Minutes and the March and April financial report. Are there any questions or changes on them? I had a question where Downtown Services, there was no fee in March, which is a good thing. Probably Is that the case? Yeah. So is it 600 a month for a fee or 1200 for a fee? I don't remember. It depends on how much we use them. Actually. Are they billing us? Okay, I can't remember if they were billing us or if they were. So it's by the hour? Part of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I met with her today. I got the, the budget. Oh, okay. Yeah. But then we have a baseline for just routine stuff. Yeah. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Okay. Moved by John, seconded by Jennifer. Sarah. Sarah. Is that one of your thing? I just heard it over here somewhere. Um, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, under old business, uh, show. Okay, so uh, we <coughs> the board vacancy, uh, the one that Sherry vacated, out uh, for public notice, and we received one applicant who is here with us here this evening, and that is Lon Rainville, and his application is in your packet. And Lon does have uh, experience with transit. He oversaw the transit program uh, for. Cow Creek. So actually, Sarah got to report to him. He's also on the Southwest Area Commission for Transportation. Honey, do you want to go ahead and read it? You can come over here and send this chair in the corner here if you don't mind. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so last time we had multiple applicants. But there were some people who found out about it late, and so we extended it a month. This time we did the month and only had one applicant. Not unusual. Okay. I was going to ask if anybody would. Actually, invited a number of people to apply uh, personally this time. You did? None of them applied. <laughs> yeah. So much for your persuasive following. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that's Very a reflection on the actual position. Yeah, I think it's a good one. I think it's great. I think, I think Lonnie brings a lot of really good uh, experience. I mean, in a way, he was kind of the city manager of the Cup Creek Tribe, kind of oversaw the government. So that's, that's a, there, so. that's, 
Well, it's a lot of knowledge. I mean, what of he's got, he brings a lot of government experience. I saw him. And working with the with the board. Is that a plus? Kind of government experience. <laughs> See, this is. Um, are we still are, are we still going to be uh, doing an interview process like we did last time, or, or well, we're going to do that today? If you guys want to do them, last time I brought questions, you didn't want to do them, or you want to bring your own, then that's absolutely fine too. So uh, maybe we just go around the table and everybody just ask them a question. Is that if you have one, and if not, you can go ahead and pass. Is that sound like a fair way to go? And I prepare them this time because he didn't want to use them last time. So. I, I I love the question thing last time. I wish I had a copy of my questions because I still want to ask, even though we only have one applicant. It was a tax. I always felt about tax. Well, tax assessed. Oh, I, I know what it was. I'm <laughs> sure Chris can so, But I like my wording. But the last time I asked it. So why don't we just go? Why don't we just go around and just ask a question? If you have a question, and uh, let's see where we're at at the end of. Uh, can we ask more than one question? Can we make a couple just, rounds? But yes. Yeah, I was okay. gonna say that. So Thank if we go around and there's more questions, it's obviously if you answer some of the answers, ask a question, it may trigger some other thought. Um, so let's at least allow everybody to have a question if you would like. So Kat, let's start with you. Well, I didn't want you to start with me. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe so you guys have some time to kind of formulate some thoughts and questions. Maybe I just kind of talk about myself. You have That's an with. excellent idea. So I'll kick it off. Uh, my name is Lonnie Randall, and I'm local to Douglas County. Uh, I grew up in Myrtle Creek, graduated from South Central High School, uh, went to college at, uh, spent two years at Oregon State, and then went up to Western Oregon, graduated from Western Oregon University with a, a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. I uh, worked for the Tribe the Casino for a little while, Human Resources, um, kind of cut my teeth there. Uh, a few years after that, went to Mercy, spent uh, about four years with Mercy Medical Center um, as their uh, project manager and HR generalist. I uh, was recruited back to the casino to take over their HR department, ran that for a while. I uh, was moved up to the government office where I took over operations uh, for the programs for the, the tribe, oversaw a multitude of uh, different departments. Uh, and for the last year, I've been working for the city of Myrtle Creek as their community development director. And so it was a new position that was created, and so I'm kind of cutting my teeth in Mercury and, Creek and uh, working with them to kind of get that up and going. So, uh, married, two kids, one's in college, one is going to be a junior next year, she's a sophomore at South Central High School. Um, and that's the local guy I've been here all my life. So uh, my parents uh, both went to Douglas High School, uh, grandparents, I mean, so I'm three or four generations here in Douglas County. So. No, there you are. Political party. Well, I can't ask that. He told me he has kids, so I can't ask him that. Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce, Rural Creek, Tri City. Uh, right now, because I work for the city of Creek, I go there as an ad hoc. They sit as business meetings, sit through the meetings, but uh, yeah. I think they provide a good, good service. Mm -hmm. I like going after they're warmed up. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I'm a defender. I'd like to think of myself as for for taxpayers. Mm -hmm. um, we provide a service to many people in Douglas County of all walks of life, of all uh, financial situations. The most advocated for a group. Of, of for our services has a huge voice. Mm -hmm. they, they've got lots of people advocating for them. Those are the users of our service. Sure. The least advocated for a group of people are the taxpayers. And this isn't a tax paying thing where everybody who has a job is paying this tax. Everybody who buys a tire at the Les Schwab is paying the tax for it. This is payroll tax. Mm -hmm. So employers are paying these taxes. They want to make sure that their money is going to good use, not just feel good programs, but things that are actually producing good uh, services for our community. Yeah. 
would you feel that you would most likely represent the the more advocated for group, the users of our service, or do you think you can be more fair and represent the taxpayers equally? Uh, that's a tough question because it, we have a, as, as a board, you have a fiscal responsibility to the users who are using the service, but people who are paying in the taxpayers, you have to be you have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that manage that money is managed wisely. And so I think it's kind of a, a, a balance that you really have to look at to make sure that the money that you have coming in is fairly applied. Um, I'm not an advocate of raising people's taxes whenever possible. And I have an example from my current job uh, that hopefully will demonstrate that. Um, we have right now a road district uh, that was brought into city limits about 10 years ago. There's four individuals who were annexed into the city who were not taken out of that road district. The road district is a taxing district. So now they were annexed into the city, they're paying city taxes and they're paying road district taxes. I'm advocating for those individuals who are basically being double taxed to have them removed out of that second taxing district. So I don't think it's fair for them to pay two taxes. Um, but we have to balance that with the city to ensure that that road is still maintained. And so that's an example where I think you have to be cognizant of and fair to everybody and look at the whole picture. Um, there is a need for taxes, that's how things are paid, but you have a responsibility to choose that money wisely and to make sure that you're not overtaxing. I don't think we have to want to overburden those individuals and the employers. Second question. Okay. If there was a program that you or somebody you knew uh, wanted to have, uh, have startup or, or uh, begin, um, and it was shown to you that it would be an unconstitutional act. Would you push for us to do it anyways, or would you just? Well, if it could be unconstitutional or illegal, I'd say no. I'd, if it was brought to my attention, it was unconstitutional or illegal. I'd, I'd go away from it. Away from it. I have a question, not related. Are we on Zoom right now? Yeah, we just can't get feedback from people on Zoom because we don't have a screen. So actually, Christine is monitoring Zoom right now. Uh, so if somebody were to type a question, uh, then we would be able to see that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are they able to see us? Yeah. Where? Yeah, I th this, this government <laughs> monitor right here, of course. Of course, you guys didn't tell me you had a government monitor. Well, it's the only webcam we have in the building that isn't connected to a laptop. Top. And the challenges that we had last time with yes. the laptop going to sleep and then mm -hmm. losing the. That was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. that's we, why I'm here today. Yeah, yeah, that was really. That's a ridiculous. We like you better in person. <laughs> we learned a lot. Yeah. I just like the fiscal responsibility of using tape instead of contractors coming <laughs> out of pocket. I didn't want to destroy anything. Um, was it, okay, so the people on Zoom were able to get their questions asked. It was a chat box. So it was taped. Yeah. Okay. But it's Sorry. taped, so we can see. I just want to make sure I just thought, wait a minute, where's so, the screen? <laughs> yeah, we're not asking for public input on interviewing when we interview questions. Oh, so no, of course not. Way. I don't think that yeah, that would be something topics, that we would yeah. ever do. Yeah. Um, did someone ask you to apply? So I saw the posting and I had uh, it's Nick Christian about it emailed to me and From just, uh, I think um, yeah Christine yeah mm -hmm. and so based on the information I took it and decided to do it. Uh, I've been working with the, the, the transit uh, program. How long has it been? It's about twelve years. 10, 12 I, before years. Sarah was doing it, when Matt was doing it, so. Yeah. Oh, a long time. So you know Sarah and Cheryl then? Yes. I think everybody knows Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> he knows Matt too. Matt, Matt Drosher. Drosher. Oh, yeah. 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 I heard Matt in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and I've. And probably uh, Mike too. If you're yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So I, hmm, I've been around for a little while. And He's also on the City of Roseburg Transportation System Plan Project Advisory Committee. Yes. And yeah. I'm also a member of the Swag of Southwestern area. Commission of Transportation with ODOT. So 
I, I do a lot with transportation. So. Okay, we don't need to ask any more questions. You're in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wait, have from me. Um, so, do you so do you know about both programs? Um, that you, both fifty three counties that you're living. Um, so you plan to dialer as yes. So do you have a dialer ride service here, uh, Myrtle Creek? We have a kind of a dialer ride. It's not a fully developed dialer ride. And right now I think it's suspended, correct? And so, yeah. Is it the PAN, right? Well, it used to be seniors escorting seniors. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, UPDN is doing some of the South County yeah. and then. Um, it's a little bit spotty right? though. I mean, I gotta Extremely. Be honest with you, so. Mm -hmm. That's not one of the. Uh, that's one of the. That's one of the SPF. Yeah, the other or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm aware. I'm aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> see, I've worked with them long enough to know what it's experience. But how do you see your role as a board member? Uh, really, just to kind of be a member of the entire group uh, to hopefully come up with some concepts, come up with ideas, uh, and to ensure that the program is running the way that it should be, that the people within the communities, and when I say communities, it's multiple, it's from you know up north all the way down south, east and west, they're all represented appropriately and making sure the programs are serving those individuals. So that's really what I see my role now. Great, thank you. I'm satisfied. Hey, are, there any, are there any other questions? I want to ask one more. Okay. Um, and I'll with all your extensive knowledge yeah. with transportation and all the programs and boards and committees that you serve on, um, we do have a, a deal, and I think that it came up in the past, um, maybe as a sidebar, maybe it came up in meetings, but um, with being a member of the board, we're, we're not getting involved with day-to-day -day activities or, or trying to micromanage our, our manager or you're, you're aware of that role oh yeah absolutely board member type. Okay. Yep. i sit on several boards and i have um, all my career uh, currently i sit on the south and school district um, board school board and then i'm also a member of the uh, foundation down there for them um, and then I deal with the council uh, for the city of Merle Creek and the planning commission. And it's the same thing. You basically, when you're in a board role, you have a responsibility to kind of look at the higher, bigger picture, not to get into the trenches, let them do their job, but make sure they're doing it appropriately type of deal. Um, but I just want to make sure if there was any, you know, chewing Cheryl out that it happened role. with us, because that's enjoy it. I'm, I enjoy it. And the way I, <laughs> personally, the way I, I see it is that I'm one of one of a group. I think it's seven. Seven, yeah. and so um, I have a role and responsibility to make sure that I put my opinion out there. But I'm one of seven. I'd be, I would be one of seven. That's the way I look at it. I, no, no, I'm, okay. I'm not going to ask any more questions. I, I made a motion that we just take him because he is really experienced and he knows what he's doing. Even sure. if I don't know what the uh, Jennifer has a question, so do you mind holding it until she gets her question? I just want to make sure no, it's, it's all right. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you have a motion to appoint? Actually, That's no, we have. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I will hold my motion. I'm sorry. I, I can hold my so motion. She's holding it. Go I ahead, have then. a question. <laughs> I'm, I'm not asking you like politically what side you're on or anything, but do you have political aspirations in the future of running for like a commissioner, city councilor on the horizon? Yeah. And will you run for re-election? Here? Which is in a year. Yeah, which is in a year. For this position? Yeah. yeah. I would. If, I, and what, if I'm appointed to this board, I'll be in it for a little more hall. So you will run? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kat. Give me a year and I'll let you know. <laughs> I, I want to thank Jennifer for having the guts to ask that question that I wanted to know. And uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept him as a member of the board and Second. appoint him. <laughs> okay, so a motion by Kat to... Uh, Point Lonnie and seconded by Jennifer. And is there any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Welcome, Lonnie. Thank you. And we're going to have Christine.
Are you going to swear along again? Oh, goodness. I think we need to develop a ritual. Why can't John swear again? John didn't This is something very important to John. I asked last time and I was told I couldn't. You will. Oh, you you and Christine out. do it together. Mm -hmm. Do you want to read it? Out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming through here. Oh, right. We're growing. So somebody raises the right hand. How quick needs to continuously send all these cookie layers? <laughs> I can't think of anybody else right there that we were sending it for. I'm good. 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 good information. <laughs> we're going to have to vote no if anybody else comes through the door. <clears throat> right hand one, so. Yes, it right would be right your right hand. hand. Yeah. That's how they would do it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I let you do it with your I let you do it with your left, but these guys right. are stuck. I speak your name. I want to rainbow. Do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution, I'll support the Constitution of the United States of America, and the United States of America, the Constitution of the State of Oregon, the Constitution of the State of Oregon, and the laws thereof, and the laws thereof, and that I will faithfully and honorably, and I'll faithfully and honorably perform the duties of, perform the duties of, uncall public transportation, uncall public transportation district director, district director, to which I have been appointed, to which I've been appointed, to the best of my ability to help me God, to the best of my ability to help me God. Where's the champagne? <laughs> Did anybody video that? <laughs> if I was having too many, I could have permission. That must be a wide angle. Wow. It, it is way back here. Oh, I'm not in there. We don't need her in there. I'm not in it. That's awesome. All right. So let's go on to the SIF stack and budget committee show. Okay. So um, I have. In contacting our previous SIF stack committee members, we have a couple of openings. Um, the, uh, the fixed route opening that is uh, a, a guaranteed spot on the uh, committee is the one that I have. And so in looking at the folks that will be coming over from UTRANS, uh, there's really only one uh, that I feel would be capable of representing and understanding everything that that we're going to be looking at as far as the projects go and having an understanding of um, the, the routes, the uh, employees, all of those kinds of things. So uh, I'm recommending that we appoint Shelly Gurney uh, as the, um, the fixed route representative. And I did reach out to um, a number of people in human services. The the one that responded back, her name is Natasha. Again, um, her name is Natasha. <laughs> Jansen. Jansen, that's it. And uh, she did uh, express interest, and in she's actually very excited uh, at the opportunity to uh, serve on the committee. And uh, so I would recommend that for the human services. Who did she replace? Uh, Sarah. Sarah was our low income representative. That's right. Where? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the staff the committee. committee. Mm -hmm. Did she represent the tribe? I was representing the tribe too. Well, you were on the tribe, but you represented officially. There was a. Oh, you, have have no. that, you have to have certain. Um, yeah. Yes. Affiliation. Do we have someone that represents yeah. the tribe then? No, so the tribe isn't actually an official <coughs> spot on the committee. Oh, okay. They have to um, represent things like veterans and seniors. If there are veterans, because I actually met one today that I ran into loggers to grab food. But there was. Our veterans is John Slays. I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. And he is interested in remaining okay. on. Yes. And he's also accepted the um, yep. offer to be on our budget committee, <laughs> as has Roy. Spurgeon, the gentleman that was here, he's our senior uh, representative. And do we always offer people? Do we put this out? So or do we yes. just offer? Sure. So we um, typically it is posted, um, but we're having some challenges right now with the UTRANS website because yeah. the certificate. So people go on there and it gives you a, 
a warning that uh, you're entering an unsafe site. Yeah, give uh, me that. Pardon? I went on and it, it, it does, it says that. Yeah, and so you actually kind of have to find your way through and almost feels like you're doing something um, that's going to damage your device in order to get to the page. So we have our, um, our uh, IT person, Matt Chappell, is working with UCAN to resolve that issue and to get the website over into the, the district's control. Uh, we did just get the uh, Douglas Rides website under our control just this week. So that's an option too. We can start posting it there. Um, and, and that's a much cleaner um, deal. We can just post a single page with a hyperlink to the application and the positions that are open. So something else that we're um, trying to do is to quickly fill um, the, instead of doing a seven person committee, have a 12 person committee. And that, that's actually how I ended up talking with Lonnie a little bit as we we're looking at doing that step committee at and the SIF staff committee as the committee that is the project advisory committee for our transit master plan. And um, what that does is it allows us that allows us to move forward to get the required plan in place before uh, we have to submit our next SIF plan, which is this time next year. So in order to be able to do this whole process in a year, we had to have something we could get in place really quickly. And then we will continue on and do the additional piece of it to get the 20 year plan after we've got the smaller one in place, which is the requirement. Um, so kind of doing the reverse of what we thought we were gonna do originally, um, which was the 20 year plan followed by the three year plan. So that's why we are reaching out and really trying to fill these positions now. Um, there is a list in the bylaws that is posted on, again online on the board of directors page on the UTrans website. Um, but there is a list of um, the suggested uh, fields for people to represent. So um, bicycle pedestrian, a transit user, uh, somebody who doesn't use transit. Um, and of course, the required ones of the representatives for uh, seniors, people with disabilities. We also have a provider um, opening as well. Uh, so that's something that we're going to put out to all of the providers uh, here this next week is that uh, and see what comes in. Yeah, I think it's U Trans plus two valid right providers, depends on there, and then all the other. Right, and right groups. now we have U Trans and one valid right provider. So we need one more provider, and it would need to be, of course, that red provider. So we'll be putting that out this next week. And um, so we, in this process, we also reviewed the bylaws and found that we had the same situation with our stiff stack committee bylaws that we did with our board bylaws in that it, they all said Douglas County Transportation District. And so we went through it and um, Christine did the, um, all of the changes for that. So all the references to Douglas County Transportation District, she's changed to Umpqua Public Transportation District or FTD. And there were a few grammatical errors that she also added, <coughs> um, but for the most part, it's exactly the same uh, set of bylaws. Oh. And on uh, the, let's get right to it. It is like the fourth page in. Page in. There's the appointment process. And all appointments, no matter how many people I contact and make a recommendation, those recommendations always have to come to the board and be appointed by the board. Uh, so there's a list here, though, of the membership criteria, and then uh, the, these are the people that we're looking for, a person that represents one of these uh, areas. So the additional five people that we're looking for uh, could be anyone in any one of these spots uh, or these categories here, and that will just give us 
better representation of the people as a whole. I think there are other groups that have larger committees. Yes. As I as I recall, um, we just did the smaller one because that was the minimum required to form to, and we needed to be certified. To. So we just had to get something. We it's hard to enough round, round enough volunteers anyway. Well, I wonder the more we can combine yeah. the functions, the better. Right. We just didn't have the time to do, to do that. Tons yeah. and tons of people. We did yeah. Yeah. Short of time. time. Well, I just want to make sure that the coastal five. area is represented <laughs> as well as the western area. We're not just I-5 transportation. Right. So, so I, I have a question really quick on this for sure. the representation. So if there is someone on the coastal area that doesn't fit into any of this, are they just not on there? Or do we say we're well, not to fit into something? So we could just say someone like, okay, well, do you think do you like the social service or human service? So, um, representative, you, you may like them over somebody else just because <laughs> that's where they're from, because they represent that area. Because I don't see where we have, even though they may represent somebody with disabilities or something, right? Example. But we can that I mean, they don't have to work like in that field, no. correct? Oh, no, 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 no. So, it really shouldn't matter, no, right? Okay, right. And that's it's a pretty extensive list there. I know that I personally fit into at least five different. Uh, areas in that list. So I would just if you like find us somebody you like, you can pigeonhole them into a open spot. I would like <laughs> us to commit openly to seeing that there is someone from each region. If that means that we have to have more committee members, then maybe we do. Yes. Maybe starting small was fine for putting the paperwork together and whatever. But <clears throat> I definitely want south, coastal, mountain, and north. I think we could probably put something for a preference for those regional geographical uh, representations, yeah. but I don't think we need to tie a hand behind our back if we don't have anybody that. Oh, I, I'm all for tying hands behind the back. I, I think that we should have a, have a specific. So another piece that we need to look at as far as the um, project advisory committee, when we're looking at the project advisory committee, there also needs to be one of the board members is the list of volunteer to be the board member for that. Does it do yeah, that? It does it can't. Well, yes, I do. <laughs> I want to make sure it's for the, for the project I want. So it is the project advisory committee for the transit master plan, <clears throat> which is going to look at the whole of um, our health service area mm -hmm. and then uh, look at a, a short and long term goal and what we want to see happen with transit. Yeah, you know I like me. Yes. All right. So that's where we are on that. Um, we just have uh, a couple more openings. The provider opening is the key one. Do you need any action from the board other than, than to say that we're in agreement with moving ahead to 12? That's the that's, that's what you need. Motion. Second. Given by Jennifer, seconded by Sarah to increase the stack of uh, Committee to 12 members, include, <clears throat> which includes the the whatever. What do we have? Required. Five or seven? The required the required ones. Yes. But uh, that way. Okay. Okay. Any uh, discussion? We're currently not full right now. With we have a couple of vacancies and we're required. Cheryl anyway. is now so, manager and Sarah's on the board. And so and now we want to expand it on. to include. Additional. Yeah, additional folks there. Five additional members. Because we only have seven. But they just have to have a quorum still. I mean, if we, right. if we increase to 12 and they're only able to get seven people to show up at a meeting, That's they can still make yeah. a quorum. That's correct. Okay. Okay. And does that include my regional request? Preference given to. Yeah. So is it included? Because I don't sure. So I guess my preference would be mm -hmm. not to include that in the bylaws, but to certainly make that a consideration. When we're planning, because I, I totally agree written, with where you're going, that it should be a consideration. I just don't want to be locked into it. In if it's life. not written, it, it doesn't exist. Well, the membership criteria is written into the bylaws, so um, we can ensure that we advertise over in that area mm -hmm. in, in an attempt to try to recruit from that. Uh, I'd like to make it a, an express. Importance because those people, you know, they don't get the newspaper. So can we do this no 
motion and then you've got to open the second motion. I don't know if you think I can do that. You're the one running for Senate. You better learn the rules. Oh, I will learn the rules. So they don't beat them into me. So, so what so makes you think I'll win? Jennifer, your motion, can you restate it with all of this? Just to make sure I, we understand what it is that Jeff introduced us in the motion that's on back there. My motion is to go from a member committee, advisory committee of seven to 12, seven being a quorum. Um, that was my own, that was okay. for my motion. And do we still have a second from Jeff on that? I said, it was Jeff. <laughs> 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 he just thinks I need four. It's old sage, I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly. Um, okay, so any other discussion? All right, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? So we do, we are able to, um, when the uh, members are coming through, we're able to say yes, yes, yes. So we have real we have point. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we can give preference without it having to be stated. Okay. And I would suggest I wouldn't want everybody from one area. <laughs> That's not diverse enough in my opinion. Well, it pretty much is all the time in everything in this county. It's well, we have somebody from, like, even on our board from the north. We have some That's I drive. Some That's I drive. You well, have nothing thing, from the coast. The good thing about Corona <laughs> <laughs> is it's opened everybody up to this Zoom thing. So more people will be more likely to volunteer for things because it's now a legal process to join a meeting and make a quorum from a video conference situation. So where before people from Glendale, Reedsport, Camas Valley, Diamond Lake didn't want to play in the political arena, they now don't have that excuse you know, of I ain't driving. If they, if they, they get good, if they get good broadband here. internet, a lot of those areas don't even have decent internet. So I'm just well, saying, if, any, if I pass away, Somebody please carry that torch because it's really I'll important it. to to the people that don't live Thank on I five. Oh, you need what? Yes, that's next. That's one on the next. Motion for the bylaws. Okay, so uh, we have the, the bylaws were the next piece that she said uh, Christine had updated. And generally, it looks like the it was just the name. I move to approve the bylaws with it being. Oh, sorry, John. I have a bad ear too, apparently. It's John. I'm not just here to look pretty, okay? Well, I think oh, no. speak up. Okay. okay. I'm seeing his new pose on his new Facebook. Are you going to make it? Yeah, yeah what you got, John? I move to approve the uh, bylaws as amended. Second. Second. Okay, moved by John, seconded by Kat. To approve the by the Umqua Public Transportation District Stitch Stack. Bylaws as amended. Any other discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, hey, Christine, just uh, one additional thought on those. Is, can we add page numbers? That is not in the fourth page, it's actually page, whatever. Yeah. Also, um, with the bylaws, because we have them so often, maybe we don't realize it, but they're printed out so often and even though I'm not an environmental person, maybe we could have seven folders in one of these cabinets that we have in our office here so that we can just pull them out and loose leaf. They don't need to be uh, stapled. So when there is a change to one page, you can just simply rip that page out, put the new one in. But it would cut down on costs. I would love a copy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody can have a copy if they want them, but I mean, we could yeah, just have a pre made uh, set of books up there to give out when we need them. Out. John. Okay, let's go to the uh, unpaid leave balance precedent. Cheryl. Okay, so uh, that's this little group of papers here that has a paper code. So um, if you'll recall back in the November, December timeframe, uh, we had a situation where we had a couple of folks that were uh, dispatchers who were temporary employees through the county working at the Sutherland Dispatch Call Center, and they were moving over to be UCAN employees. And it, so I listed 
get out here. It was determined by the board that the employees in question were performing a job for the district through a purchase service agreement with a provider. It was determined by the board that the employees in question were not able to use their vacation time prior to transferring due to factors beyond their control. It was discussed by the board that paying out their leave balance for these employees was essentially who were essentially transferring from one company to another as they were fulfilling a job the district deemed necessary that this would set a precedent and the future financial liability that could, could come into play by setting this precedent was discussed by the board and the district now has an employee that falls into these same circumstances and the district has not yet set a policy regarding future late leave payout situations that might occur. So the summary in this page is my leave for leaving you can. And this is the uh, summary, the example that was used in those discussions. I'm so sorry, really quick. I didn't get that in my mail. I can't, can I grab just the um, one that's paper clips? Yes. I think I actually, that was supposed to be mine, but I didn't have it I was kind of going to have it on the Do you have an extra yeah, yeah, memorized too? Okay. I got it, I got it. Thank you. Okay. So uh, when I left UCAN, I had uh, 832 and a half hours of uh, leave that was on my books. Uh, of that, 240 was paid time off. And the additional amounts were the 536 and a half hours of extended bonus pay, uh, 40 hours of flex, which is what accrues instead of overtime for an exempt employee. And 40 hours is the cap. So once you hit 40 hours, you're, you're done for unless you use that leave. And 16 hours of uh, extended PTO, which was a gift for my 10 year anniversary that I, I also never got to use. So at the time of that, I had 832 and a half hours of leave available to me. Uh, you can did pay out 120 of that, and the paid time off as set in the precedent would leave an additional 120 hours to be paid. That leaves 592 hours, and I'm not asking to be paid. But based on the precedent, I would say that the 120 hours falls into the same category, and that that's just my recommendation. Um, I also provided the um, the timeline for the discussions that we had in the October 4th and November 5th and December 9th meetings regarding this. And those employees were paid out the full amount of their leave. The reason I'm bringing this to you now is I am one employee. And, and it's just, this is information to do with what you choose. I, I actually brought this up. Um, so listening to the, the drivers and the, this was never shared, it was never discussed, anything with the drivers and employees of UCAN. Uh, but just thinking about the fairness, if, you, if you've worked for a place for 10, 15 years, you know, you build up some leave, you build up some time. And that's great that you get paid. In this case, they have what's called PTO. They don't have vacation and sick leave. It's all one combined lump, uh, lump sum. Um, it just seems kind of odd that you and you know we're taking over the service. I think that's the that's the key here. Um, and so, at no fault of their own, they're still working, doing the same thing. And from what one, one day they're going to be working for UCAN, and the next day they're working for the district. And all of a sudden, because of that transfer of ownership, if it was like a business, they lose half of their uh, PTO. So they get, they're going to get paid for half, and then they lose half, and so you immediately start at the district with a balance of zero. So you have no sick leave, you have no vacation leave, you have nothing, uh, because you either lost half of it or you got paid for the other half. And so my suggestion was that as a, as a board, uh, after to uh, take this to the board just to see what we want it to do, if if we're taking over, uh, you know, a service like this, so so if you've let somebody go, you know, if they let somebody go and we're not taking them on, I don't think we owe anything. 
but if they're coming on to become an employee of ours, uh, just because we're taking over a, a service that we had previously contracted, it seems like I wasn't thinking of paying them for the additional hours, but just starting them out at that bank of hours that they had and transferring that other half over. So if, for example, they have 100 hours of PTO in the books and you know they get paid for 50 of them, I would rather start them out with the 50 on, on their, um, a, as an employee of the district. Everybody else that is a new employee never worked for anybody to start new. They're going to start with whatever, you know, whatever the eight hours a month or whatever, whatever the number is, I don't know. Um, but just to be fair, I think that way they at least have something that if they get sick or something happens, you know, they're able to take a little bit of time off and not just lose everything that they had gained over a period of time. So that was, and so I had just suggested to Cheryl that this might be something that we want to talk about as a board and, and if there's anything we want to do. And you can't, is it? <clears throat> Yeah, you can. Isn't giving anything for it? They're just saying their policy luck. is they pay half of your paid time off. It, it doesn't touch any of the other the the flex, the XPTO, or the extended illness bank. So based on that, if it, of the 240 hours of PTO that I had, I got paid 120 of those out. So. so on the second page here, though, you've got a little more information that might answer some of the questions. At the end of March, the last uh, lead report that I received from UTAN Payroll as the supervisor over there, um, there were 4,618 hours of leave on the books for the folks that are most likely to come over as district import. Employees. That includes the paid part, the part they're going to pay? Um, that, that includes everything, yes. And then you can is they're liable to pay out 1,062 and a half of those hours, which leaves 1,062 and a half hours um, that are, are the unpaid. And then unpaid PTO. Uh, that also leaves 2,305 of the extended illness and flex hours that would not be paid either. And there are amongst the other five or six employees about 180, 188 Oregon sick hours, which may, you know, these numbers of course are at end of March, it's about April, COVID. Um, they earn a lot of the PTO babies currently. So the Paycheck Protection Plan. Um, yeah. Did we apply for that? No, that's that's for not for government. You can't you can't apply for it though. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. You can't yeah. Just, yeah. No. And they do. Yeah. So they're paying the uh, the paycheck anyway, and that doesn't require them to use leave. So, but at the same time, they're still accruing leave because they're employees. So. Um, that number is going to be plus or minus, but if you were to take that 1,062 hours and based on the precedent that was set, and uh, if somebody were to bring a lawsuit against us, that's over $17,000 of leave liability that we would have to pay out. Well, we so, don't have a rule or a statute in place, so they wouldn't have legal grounds yeah, to stand so. on. Mm -hmm. So that would really be precedent was set when we paid the leave for the dispatchers in the exact same situation. I don't think it's it the exact same. same. It wasn't the you exact know. same situation. Yeah, I don't think so either. This that was that was something totally different when they went from Douglas County to to uh, UCAN. We're talking about a situation we're where talking about we're becoming the yeah, anyway, yeah. So we're talking about a situation in which we're bringing people over for which we contracted for service and we're taking over the service. We didn't take over that service. Mm -hmm. We're at that point, so we're taking over a service and bringing them on as an, as employees of the district, mm -hmm. and so that's why as an as an employer, I I would want to make sure that they've at least got some 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 protection there, you know, some time that they can take should they get sick or should something happen. I wouldn't pay it out. I would, like I said, roll it, roll it over right and allow it to be used. Exactly. Right here. Yeah, I don't think it's worth. I don't think because that doesn't accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. It's 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 right. saying hey you know all of a sudden you got sick and what are you just going to have that maybe eight hours if you work that month mm -hmm. you so, know so so 
I, I would like for us to make sure first that we do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But also, I would like to know what, if any, legal obligations there are for the district on this. So I'd like to refer this out to the attorney. Yeah, we can ask, but I don't think that my opinion would be that there isn't any, but we can certainly ask that. I'd just yeah. like to do that yeah. before we make any decisions. I'm not trying to screw you out of anything, no, no, no. And, and I'm for making things whole. I'm not trying to screw you out of anything either. Sure we're making a record. Yeah, we, we don't need to make a decision today. This was okay. to, this is to bring this topic of discussion. So if we need to get more information or if there's anything anybody wants, we can bring that. So let me ask you this: uh, there are completely different um, employer number and all that. Correct? I mean, complete separate entity. Right. Yes. So what you're doing is actually a volunteer thing because it's one mm -hmm. business to another. Right. So I don't think there is any legal. Most companies don't. Right, Especially right. just starting out, most of them would say, yeah, too bad. Sorry. But with this being a transitional thing, I think from mm -hmm. a recruiting standpoint, I think it's something that you want to really consider because otherwise it can look torture. We, we want people to feel good about coming to work for, for us as an agency and not feel. I want them to work for yeah, us. Yeah. I want them to want to work. I think where um, my thought process is as far as setting a lead rollover policy or passing a resolution that is specific to. The this transfer instance. process um, is if we, because my thought is we'll probably implement the rolling over there and give them these hours to give them leave. But if we do that in this situation, is there then going to be an expectation that the next person who is hired from the trucking company? No, no, no that's different. No, that's because, different. because we're that's taking over something. Yeah. Okay. Any new employee will start out at at a new mm -hmm. employee rate. But let me add on to this discussion. So we talked about rolling over the hours into, into their own bank or whatever, you know, so it's back in back into that. Um, I guess I would further that just a little bit further in that I think they also ought to be earning the rate at which, you know, the number of years. So if if zero to five years you earn eight, but six to twelve, ten years you earn ten. You know, hours. It ought to be at the at the rate in terms that they've been that they were earning previously, yeah. or 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 a, 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 let me not say the rate at which they were earning, but a, a comparable rate because our rate may be slightly up or down. They'll be given years of service credit based on yeah. the years of yeah. service yeah. and stuff. So not everybody is just earning coming across and earning the same amount as like a, as like a new employee. They're going to start out as they transfer over in in this one time transition. To at what they were essentially earning before. Are you hearing mm -hmm. anything from the employees over there that they're not wanting to change? Unless some of these things are resolved, just out of curiosity. So it's not yeah. that they don't want to come. Uh, that's not what I'm hearing at all. Okay. What I'm hearing is concern. Am I going to lose all of my leave? Am I? The one person in particular has been an employee for uh, I want to say 24 years now, and um, so. She's, she's afraid that she's not going to get to keep that higher date that has been transferred from one to the next. What's, the what's next your timeline next. for trying to get this individuals rolled over? The 30th of June, July 1. July 1. It may be uh, a good idea if it will FAQ, um, you know, facts and questions sheet together so that some of these questions could be answered. Because I mean, I know if I was in her shoes, I might have the same concern. We'll put like a little one pager together of kind of what we're talking about. Maybe we'll pass that out and alleviate a lot of your concerns. Well, and I, so then they all have the facts and not the telephone. Right. Facts. Well, and then yeah. instead of us doing, say we we pass this resolution and then next month we come back, oh now they want to know about this. Can we get a list of everything that they're concerned about with yeah. the rollover and do it all in one? I think that's a good idea. Document, so I would like, assume that anything and everything you can think that they'd be concerned about is going to be on there, which we need to be concerned with every yeah, we, we want anyway. to know everything yeah. that they're reporting. Doesn't mean we're going to address everything. No, but, 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 but I just, know, yeah, I think that expectation is to be made. We're just seeking information that doesn't mean that this is going to be implemented. Yeah, we need, I do too. We need to get our plan helpful. on what the transition is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So this is May and bring that back in June? Yes. And then we would have a decision before um, July 1 that way. Okay. Very good. So, and then the other was just the... Um, going back for a second, how 
What is the hiring front? Do we know how many are coming over exactly at this point, or are we not sure quite yet? We, we're not quite sure. And part of that is because there are people that are now getting paid to be on unemployment. Right, gotcha. And yeah. they're getting paid. So the people then that are not going to be rolled over to the district, what are we going to do? They're, they're just going to get their 50% from you again. Mm -hmm. we're done. Mm -hmm. So that should be on the FAQ. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because that's not our responsibility. That's right. you know, yeah. we're not we're actually not bringing them over. It's because well, we're not bringing them our over responsibility, but we want to do right. this right. Or what's right. who are going to be our employees? Yeah, we yeah. want to do something that. else. We yeah. might want to consider in that uh, policy resolution, whatever it is that we end up doing, is if, if somebody rolls over 120 hours, um, they can't get paid out that from us until they have you know upon leave. Until they've been an employee for a certain amount of time. Yeah. So if somebody's not going to. Yeah, that makes sense. Because yeah, we don't roll have over to a huge liability. Quit a week later and be like, all right, you yeah, owe me all this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, in which they should all be. <laughs> is, is there a time frame that you, so we can get this gave us some direction in six months, a year? I'd say uh, at least six months. Nine days with the six months. I'd say at least a year. For the what? Well, and actually, for, we could see that based on how many hours they have. So they yeah, can't come over a week later. Yeah. Typically, I've seen where it's, it's on a quarterly basis. So if you leave within, you know, three months, we pay you at 25%. If you leave at six months, you get 50%. Oh. If you leave at three months, so you can invest. Yeah. And then after a year, you get 100%. It's, it's tiered based on that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so that was that discussion. We we'll still have the attorney's opinion on. Yeah, so I actually have put this out there too, and I just haven't got anything back from him yet. Do you want to just forward? It should just email us the answer, whatever he sends yeah. you, and then you can go from there. Absolutely. Speaking of contractual chaos, that makes me think we haven't heard shit from Dennis forever. Is he still with us? I have no idea. <laughs> he, he is. Uh, and he's working on trying to figure out how to do maybe some training via Zoom. Um, I'd like to compel him to our meeting next month. We could ask him to attend that meeting. I'd like to compel him. What, what can we threaten him with? He's being what you ask? summoned. <laughs> next <laughs> month is his last month. Uh, right. Right. So we might want to see him. Yeah. His contract is up next month. Dennis used to be the other way. So Dennis, he just yeah. take over a bunch of responsibilities when he's up next month. He was only yeah. contracted for it was just a year. year with, that was the and then he was fully retired. Oh. Well, we so that's why we were trying to give him stuff to yeah. do so he wasn't just hanging out for the last three months of his contract. I think part of this week. We're forward. That makes it week. That makes it week. Okay, so. Follow up regarding plexiglass glass for drivers. Yeah, nothing. I've done nothing on this, to be honest. Okay. I have worked every single day since our last meeting, morning till night until yesterday. Okay. I move that we fire Jennifer from the, <laughs> <laughs> from the plexiglass <laughs> I did talk to Andrea though, and she's all for doing whatever is necessary to protect the driver. So she probably has an update. Um, I contacted her the next day um, and had a great discussion with her, but I have done absolutely nothing on my end. And I was going to get a hold of Julie Brown, who I think Cheryl said that they were taking care of their in-house stuff. And then once they were done with RBTD, uh, Rogue Valley, then after they were done protecting their drivers, they were going to kind of push out through Oregon to help everyone else. Right. So we can, we can yeah. send them to DPSSP training so they're properly trained in protecting themselves and their passengers. <laughs> Have you heard I don't, from Julie? I, the only reason I know okay, yeah. I, I mean, I really don't think so. I apologize. I just, she's yeah, always carrying on. Okay. I can't actually know about naturally in my wheelhouse, but I am definitely in those kinds of emails. Because I'm on the list of those emails. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not having purchased those processes. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so if you don't mind, I could jump in here with the. You can take over completely. <laughs> My God, Jennifer. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I am at my next question. Yeah. 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 So there were actually a couple of companies that contacted me that have, uh, it's what they do, you know. And so the, there is a metal stanchion that runs um, from floor to ceiling in the buses behind the, um, the driver's 
sheet, and usually there's a, a piece of plexiglass there that blocks over. And so what these do is they connect to that stanchion, and they actually have a door and a, a sliding window, those kinds of things. So it depends on which one you're looking at as to, um, to what kind of one even has that fan built into the door to circulate the air in the cab, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, bottom line is, they say our buses aren't big enough. They do not have anything that is for a small bus. So we're looking Ooh. at the engineer. Yeah. So um, Julie's folks are just now to the point where they're getting done doing their own vehicle. Um, so they'll be looking to, to be able to help us out. Also, um, Shelly is going to provide mm -hmm. measurements for the, um, the floor to ceiling height and from the stanchion forward to the dash. Uh, so uh, I cannot think of the name of the place, but uh, they did say if we provided the, um, the measurements that they would look at engineering something for us. They just weren't sure how long it would take, but we weren't the first uh, company that had inquired. So, you know, it's something that they're looking at doing. Uh, and they're trying to roll it out as fast as humanly possible. Could this be something that the drivers are going to want permanently? I mean, yes, some of them just for the, you know, there's like cough and flu season and people mm -hmm. come on that they're like sneezing, even if it's an allergy, it's still like you're sneezing in the face. So right. just any kind of barrier there. That we could shower curtain. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing yeah. that in some restaurants. Well, that, that some TriMet driver hung a shower curtain. That down. Oh, <laughs> just a clear one? I mean, yeah, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Contrast in the for. So for our drivers, it is really um, more of a safety from preventing uh, interaction with passengers. Right. Because sometimes there is a fear that the, that the passenger is going to be too aggressive. Mm -hmm. It's very seldom been uh, an issue that has uh, come to that point. But we did have a, a driver at one point that was you know, like this, holding the, the passenger off. And when he had the most opportune moment and he was tipped back in the most perfect position, he did the push with both feet and the guy went head over heels down the steps and out onto the ground. And he got the door closed and it was all very exciting. And the police were there within a matter of seconds after he hit the ground and they had just let him go. Yeah, so that's why the, our drivers are the, the So ones. this could be something that's a permanent stay in the buses. So even if yeah. we had to invest, well, put so out some money for the it. The advantage is the 5311 that is available right now at no uh, match. That's specifically what it's for, is mm -hmm. for protective equipment. So if we can get an order in for this and get it delivered while this is still available, which would be before the end of the year, uh, then it is completely paid for out of a, a pot of money we never had available to us before. Mm -hmm. That's why I use the time to be all through there, right? Exactly. Yeah. Cheryl? Yes. Um, before the end of the fiscal year or before the end of the year? December. Okay. So we still have a little bit of time to consider this. And I think the, the conversation can be had quickly to know if it's feasible. Yes. Um, UCC and our local high schools all have shops, shops. Mm -hmm. and it might be a good opportunity for even the local high schools to work with UCC mm -hmm. to get these yeah. sort of things uh, running, which would be, you know, obviously we'd still pay for the services rendered. It would be an investment into our schools, but it would also be done cheaper probably. Yeah. 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 I think that woman is having a good effect on it. Who? Whoever that new woman is. That you're building a fancy little hospital. Man, I've got to start figuring out what <laughs> <laughs> The chickens? Yeah. I've been with Rachel for 10 years. Oh, well, she's had a good effect on you. All of a sudden, now All of a sudden, now. Yeah. Okay, let's go into personal PPE. Uh, the personal protective equipment. Um, so, initially, I had reached out to the uh, Douglas County uh, Emergency. Um, it's the one that's done, run by Wayne Stinson. Uh, and then Dr. Dan and Hopper was part of that, um, you know, the emergency group. Uh, and the initial 
initial response was we're not medical and that everything that they have needed to be preserved for medical. Um, but uh, I did find a, uh, it's a, an electronic bus company, an electric bus company in China. <laughs> You've been on Wish. <laughs> They're in China, uh, but they converted some of their bus manufacturing facilities to uh, manufacture masks and hand sanitizer for buses, and they were distributing through uh, the the bus suppliers. So it was actually the electric bus supplier that reached out. Uh, so we went ahead and ordered uh, 2,000 single-use masks. They come in a box like what she's got right here. Yeah, you get one <laughs> yeah. And then we also got the, um, we ordered 250 of the KN95 um, masks that are the more respirator type of a mask. Mm -hmm. um, and I initially thought that that was more than enough and maybe even you know, more than what we needed. Um, but then I got asked to provide comments on specific guidance for transit agencies, and it was the draft rules for phase one reopening guidance, um, which we've been asked, asked not to share until it's actually out of the draft version and, and approved. Um, but part of it is require cloth face covering for all passengers and require drivers and other transit employees to wear medical grade masks and to provide medical grade masks for drivers and other transit employees on the bus or train, cloth coverings to other transit employees that are not on the bus and the train, but feel that they are regularly interact with the public. Uh, disposable or cloth face coverings to any passenger that does not have one. So if these requirements go into place, and then I didn't order enough and I need to order again. We don't have the authority to require people wear new clothing. So um, the, what I alluded to earlier when you were saying that the um, the governor's order is illegal, mm -hmm. um, regardless of whether it is or not. Uh, and I'll just leave that statement at that because I think you know where I stand with that. Um, but regardless of whether it is or not, the state agencies, which ODOT is a state agency, um, they are held to those orders. And we receive funding through ODOT. Therefore, if these guidelines go into, if they become the requirement for reopening, uh, and even though we haven't been doing this to this extent, if this is what it takes to stay open until they sort this stuff out and decide whether it's legal or illegal, required or not required, this is what we need to do in order to so just to play the devil's advocate, it's a double-edged sword. If we require it and somebody sues us and they win that we forced some unconstitutional policy onto them, we're out money more so than what we received from any grant. State, and we have a lawyer in here, Supreme Court ruled that just following orders is not a defense. If we're going to follow something, we need to have our attorney tell us one way or another his opinion, but we, we, we don't have the authority to make cat wear a hat. We, 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 we're a government agency. We're limited in our powers. This is what I was talking about. I asked you a constitutional question. We're limited in our powers by the constitution. We don't have the authority to do that. So I, I just don't like this conversation. Is Boardman on the phone and she can answer whether, like, if they're going to stop our funding if we don't require that? We've already got our funding. It'll be two years before we get more, and by then it'll be settled in the No, court. we get funding all the time. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we, we get funding quarterly. Every, yeah, well, every quarter course. state gives it to us. So are they going to say, hey, you didn't require Are they that writing that into or? the policies that they're trying to draft? Because yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, That's it's what illegal. I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Is, we can't get our money though from the state. The state's saying, hey, 
we're not going to give you your money if you don't make these people wear masks. So I know on the uh, I know on the retail stuff that I've seen from the governor's office, <coughs> you know, they're also talking about the same thing, requiring customers or allowing businesses to to choose whether to require customers like Costco. That's totally to, different to do that. But one of the things it says is consult your legal. Um, that that's a totally different situation. That's private companies, private organizations who can have policies for their private private entity. The government is bound by a constitution and they can't go outside and, of it. And there's a clause in the constitution that talks about promoting general welfare and safety. Promoting an education is two different things from, or is different than mandatory. Uh, so that would uh, give the uh, government uh, authority to require a lot of things like vaccinations. Yeah. You can't mandate ma vaccinations. So, so Some this, states do and they do it. So in this case, I think you know we have. You want you want to go to school? Get your yeah. kid vaccinated. We have an executive. That's the rule in Oregon. Some people have exceptions. Yeah. Right, and my kids aren't vaccinated. So we have an executive my, my, within, my with, stay away from your with an executive agency basically saying you must do it. You know, the regulatory agency over this district basically saying that you need to do that. So I think we just have to comply and let it sort itself out. Well, I, we, I think, we don't have to do anything that we can vote on. I think our bottom line is. Do we provide service to people who refuse to wear a mask yes. when when the government? I don't know. I don't know because we can't. Yes, we can. Well, let's let's talk to the lawyer. Yes. So John, what you're saying is the mobile phones and things are all covered masks. You're just saying you're not getting off. When of it. when we do that policy and I go stand at that station mm -hmm. and I'm refused to ride on public transportation because I refuse to wear a mask, I'm suing us. You may be standing on the curb while you do it. Is our RPC on the phone? I think this is a good question. Christine is can Jennifer. We get Jennifer's. Yes. Is there or a way to end Yeah. I have a one comment from Jennifer and one from Natasha. And I will unmute her. So, uh, or maybe we'll have her call the number here. And I don't want I don't want Jennifer's opinion. I want to know. No, I that. think she gets that. Yeah, we should just want to know. Are they going to withhold our first opinion? So 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 Jennifer's relates to something something else. I'll share that. But the uh, Natasha Atkinson says K95 masks are no longer recommended by uh, Oregon Health Authority Health Authority uh, for guidance that came out Saturday. It's retiring to standard mask. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what did Jennifer say? I'm sorry. Uh, Jennifer, I didn't read it, but Jennifer's has to do with the needs grant from 5311. So I'll just tell you it's a lot of subject, but needs grant from 5311 opened on July 1st, 2020, and closed on 12 31 2020. You just need to put in the grant application. Uh, the funds don't have to be spent before 12 31. You just have to have the application in before December 21. And just not until July 1. Okay, because okay. we got some time to do that. I unmuted. Hello? Yeah, I hear her. Oh, yeah. Can you turn it up? She's on the I heard her in there. Oh, oh, like, oh, yeah, I heard oh, her in there. Bad button. Yeah, well, there. Well, you can not <laughs> Where is she, Mike? Where is she? I don't know. I don't know. It's really annoying. Uh, it's <laughs> like, wait, you're so I can see. <laughs> Ian, be on the screen. I'm going to push the buttons where it does not say. Oh, right there. Uh -huh. So now it says minus DND. Is that what we want? <laughs> uh, no. no. Right now it is not. Do not disturb right now. Okay. So Hello. Can you hear me? I can. You can hear me? Yeah, can you call the uh, conference room phone number? Can I call the conference room phone number? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's giving her the phone number. Okay. We should call in a second, so be prepared to answer, John. Speaker. We can just answer it. Any background music? <laughs> <laughs> Hey Jennifer. Hi Jennifer. Hello. Oh, you've got to unmute her again. Our meter. But we couldn't hear you. Okay, now we can. Okay. 
So wearing masks, requiring the public to wear masks on buses was the topic of conversation. We were concerned that ODOT could withhold funding if we said, well, even if you are not wearing a mask, you can come on the bus. What's that look like that you know of? So what I understand um, from the guidance that we've gotten is that um, if there is a, a ruling that goes out by the state that says that you have to wear it, then um, the service can be refused because that is an order by the state. But what we're saying right now is that you are, uh, most of the places are suggesting people wear the mask. And um, that we are suggesting that the transit agencies work closely with their health departments, the county health departments, and then also the state and follow the guidance that they have. The one thing though that you get into, um, if the government, if the federal government makes this a requirement, it's kind of similar to um, the requirement with the drug and alcohol um, testing. And where um, Oregon says that it's legal for folks to smoke marijuana, but because we take federal money, um, the drivers cannot have any um, marijuana in their system. So uh, if the federal government goes to the point where they say that everybody has to wear a mask and people refuse, then they will not be able to ride because that's what the government has told us, unfortunately. Thank you. So I think we just follow whatever the rules are. So currently it's a suggestion and hopefully it stays that way. So we yeah. suggest it and if someone wants on without it, we let them on. Yeah. And, and if it, if the rules change where it becomes a requirement, but the federal government says okay, or the state We're government, but that would still be a policy we've had to vote on, just like it was for up to it, for uh, adopting our drug and alcohol policy. So I still get to vote no, and you all get to vote, so it's no big deal. <laughs> the bottom line is that you're getting money from the federal government. So if you decide you don't want to follow those rules, then you can just not get that money from the federal government anymore. So if you choose not to do the drug and alcohol part of it, then all of that 5311 funding would go away because that is a requirement of that funding. So if they do come up with something regarding a mask, since the majority of the funding um, for the CARES Act came from 5311, 5311F, then that would be money that you would not be able to get because of not following the guidance of the- You, you don't need to worry about that, Jennifer. I'm, I'm one voice out of seven, so. Thank you, Jennifer. Was that, that clear enough for everybody? I think we're, we're at. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. You're welcome. You can probably just stay on the phone. Yeah. yeah that's what I was <laughs> Hang out, oh Jennifer. Gosh. Okay. On. So let's go to the. This uh, is one of those things that I hate about the government is there's so many fun funding sources, and everybody's always talking about buck the system and 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 go local and have local control. We should try to figure out how to get off of the government's teeth and, and start funding ourselves. But I know it's, it's huge, but getting these, these local companies to, to help with these sort of local issues would help us to not have to bend uh, to the government. It, it just totally sucks. I just wanted to say that, so move on. <laughs> General Manager Report, Joe. All right, so uh, some of the same things going on this month as it's just the continuing saga of, so our uh, master plan, the statement of work is complete and it is in process for procurement of a consultant. Uh, the loan application and the piece of adding phase two for the neighboring property, uh, we'll be able to complete that this month. We will know um, more than likely this week or next week at the latest whether or not that's a feasible purchase to add that on to the, um, to the loan application. Um, as we were coming on board uh, with Christine and I as the first two employees, our employee insurance costs actually ended up coming in um, quite a bit lower than originally quoted. Uh, the employee only health is $114.85 a month less and the employee plus children is 212 and 45 cents less. 
What, what does that mean, really? The total. What that means is $5, that five thousand dollars less a year. Five thousand dollars less a year per person. So how much is it a month? So it was. Is it five hundred? Because I didn't memorize and, that. Was it eight hundred dollars or something like that? And then it yeah, was a thousand. Yeah. It was about a thousand for uh, uh, employees with children. I think. Yes, and it dropped okay. down to five hundred and something and eight hundred and something. That's per month. Yes, and so the employee. Five thousand total between the two of them. Per year. The employee with children is now comparable to what we were originally quoted for employee only. Mm -hmm. So that's a significant that's drop. That rocks. Yes, it's really really awesome. Um, Sorry, so the, that's okay. And that that number is locked in through not this July, but the following July. So that's our first year insurance rate is that much lower. So that's that's awesome. Um, working with Muner and Davidson to finalize the budget. And this one is probably just a little more complicated than any budget that we'll have going forward because we have it in running. Utrans, you know, and there is an unknown as far as the employee payroll tax. And um, with the drop in the economy, uh, we're looking at uh, six months out. The, uh, the stiff uh, payment that we receive is probably going to be significantly less than what the last mm -hmm. couple have been. Mm -hmm. So um, trying to uh, just get something that's in the ballpark to be able to present. And then on that, um, so we want to be able to adopt that budget at our next meeting. Um, and so in order to do that, we need to have our budget committee meeting. And we are the seven board members and uh, seven other members of the public is what the budget committee is supposed to be. We now have four of those additional people lined up, so we're still looking for three more. Uh, so still waiting for a response for, from email or voicemail that I've left for other uh, staff committee members. Uh, but we need to get the, uh, the first advertisement out in the newspaper, which can be no more than 30 days before the meeting. So at this point, we need to decide when do we want to have that budget committee meeting, uh, because it also has to be more than seven days for the second mm -hmm. advertisement. And then with the news review, there's the challenge of uh, they don't post anything on Monday. They don't what you submit on Friday doesn't go in until Tuesday, so you have to be really cognizant of their mm -hmm. timelines as well. And they have this whole special form and all of that for the for budgets. Yeah. 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 So um, do we want to set the budget committee meeting um, for a week before our next board meeting, or the same day as our next board meeting, or I don't remember the week before. How do you want to? I think there's a notice between the budget committee and the budget hearing too. I don't remember the time. I, I think there's two two meetings. That's what I was thinking too. Okay, so then I need to reread that and and okay. Check check with uh, um, Carissa. Yes, she yeah. knows that stuff. Yeah, well, I was thinking uh, just check with uh, Dean Davidson. Okay. last time. So when we were talking about that this morning, um, she indicated that. Because of the whole COVID thing, we might be able to get away with one posting uh, in news review and having it posted online. So uh, if that's an option. Uh, call the local budget section of the Department of Revenue and ask them if they've issued any special rules. Yes, that's what they were looking into today. So working on that, and um, could you send that to the city of report and have them post it maybe somewhere? Because I know that the review doesn't get over there. Sure, I can do that. Actually, isn't there a news? They have the Oak Park Post, but it's only once a week. So we so earlier in this meeting you talked about uh, Shelley and Natasha. Um, mm -hmm. Being on the stiff stack, and I think those are also part of the budget, right? Yes. So, so we need to actually have a motion. Did we make a motion to appoint? Oh, to appoint? No, we did not. Okay, so we need to do that. Okay. So 
was there, so these are people that we asked, correct? Yes, Shelly is the, filled the UCAN spot, and Natasha filled the human services that Sarah oh, vacated. Okay. And, so and they, Ash, they, is Natasha the one that's on Zoom? No, no, not, a different not one, the Jansen. same Natasha. But that oh, Natasha that could, when we put it out for providers, it's something that she could uh, apply for as a provider. I think she'd be, I think she'd be great. <laughs> uh, so yes, um, and somebody else that had uh, stated that they were Lois Bergen, you said uh, was yep. the veterans one. Is, is, oh, John is, Slays is, is the John. veterans one. Oh, Roy John. is the seniors. Okay. Um, I'm still waiting for a response from William Schmidt. Mm -hmm. uh, John Campbell wasn't he on the senior? He was. He, he, he was, was on the board, though. and then he was on the board. So he had to resign. I wonder because yeah. he still yeah, does the back. He still does the senior through the county, right. so he might be interested in coming back. And coming back as a, yeah, as he another might. representative. Yeah, mm -hmm. And then uh, Toby also indicated he'd be willing to um, fill a slot also as a um, somebody who uses transit but not often, okay. um, and he's got. Considerable knowledge, and they all had terms and stuff. So I think, they, but I think they were in July. So, right. and there was also the guy that came in with Sarah. Um, Vincent, thank you, Vincent. Portolano. Yeah, Portolano, yeah. Vincent. Yeah. Isn't he still on? He wasn't on. Did he run? No, no. He just ran for the board. Oh. Yep. So the um, the slot that we have open actually on the staff committee is for the provider. Um, if we uh, appoint Natasha and Shelley, uh, I think Charlene might even be might be interested. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll put that all together in an email and get it out to everybody, and I will copy the board when I send that out as well. Okay. Make sure so we don't need to take any action tonight. Then we'll just. Cover that next Other time. than appointing the Natasha and and, and so we'll that all to the stiff the staff. Time. And are we also saying budget or just this match right now? Um, budget and stiff staff. And stiff staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't even know these people. So the reason that um, I spoke to Shelly about uh, the the fixed route mm -hmm. spot is because she's the most familiar with it. So she'd be a, a good representative, and in two months she'll be the um, most likely. You know, over. Yeah, and is that that's okay though, right? That she's a paid employee and on one of these. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's you, yeah. yeah, right. It's the it's a, what we wanted. So then she can have to be replaced when she comes over. So that there's no. Yeah. No. Okay. Have to have yeah. a scout yeah. representative yeah. that can be paid by that. Yes. Yeah. So that's fine. It yeah. just can't be her. Yeah. 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 All right, I moved to appoint Shelly and <coughs> Natasha <coughs> Jansen. Natasha Jansen. I don't know what one. She's even to the mm -hmm. stack and the budget committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Okay, so uh, uh, motion by Jennifer, second by Mark. Any other discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries and just retro chat is out of the room. Okay. Um, with that, the John no veteran place. Um, the state has a committee type of thing that they've been trying to get going. Jennifer, are you still on the phone? Yes. What? what um, do you know who is running that veterans? reach out thing before COVID-19 went stupid? Yeah, it's actually Frank Thomas, and he is the um, RTC in Region 5. And they've actually um, gotten the, they were forming the committee to do the rules and um, get some information on that. And they've actually put out the grant application. So, um, Oh, last I heard that Frank was stopping because there was some issues with writing rules and stuff, and I haven't gotten an email back since. But anyways, my, my point was, if John could reach out to them, if they're still actively looking for a representative in Douglas County, 
And he might be a better person than I am because I'm just too busy to. So we've got to connect John to Frank. Yes. Is, is that still a plausible thing, Jennifer? Or? Um, I don't know that he has any more work for the folks to do. There okay. could be some going forward, but um, they kind of changed the trajectory of this project due to COVID and had to fast track it because of the money coming from DAV. Um, so those grant applications are out there and they're due, I believe, on May 15th. Okay. That might be and we send out information um, at the beginning or middle of April, I believe it went out. Okay, that, that might be a good thing to let John know about anyway, since he is the DAV representative for the VA. Um, yeah, I'm sure actually meeting with him uh, tomorrow. With oh, John? Awesome. Yeah. Oh, all right, I'll just shut up then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am just sort of free. Yeah, I'm meeting with him and uh, Tuse, um, the Tuse Transit. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay sorry. That's okay, moving right on. <laughs> So um, we did get several bids for the uh, electricity to go to the gate so that we can actually connect the, the fences with the uh, gate and Cascade Electric came in at about half the price of the next one up, which was North River. So it'd be about $3,300 to put the electric into a gate that will swing open and close. Um, so IT, Mount Chapel, who we have contracted with, with Cortec, uh, he was able to complete the transfer of the switch and the software that's in that black cabinet there. Um, so we now actually uh, own that green clear. Um, we, uh, <laughs> when the software that runs the equipment in that cabinet was purchased by the district, um, the UCAM IT person registered it as UCAM software. And so there was a moment when we thought we were out at about $3,000. Uh, but uh, our IT guy that has been working with us worked his magic and um, did not accept no for an answer. And I was really uh, impressed with how um, competent and uh, he was just cordial through the whole thing, never a bad thing to say, um, and just stuck to business and made it happen. So that is all taken care of. Uh, he also get, got all of our computers set up. Uh, so we are networked and we actually have uh, software on them that we can use. So uh, that's exciting. And we are set up in the, as a client in the Drug and Alcohol Consortium through OxyHealth. And that is one of the 5311 requirements. So that's something that we had to have in place in order to be able to take on uh, the transit service. John Parker, our real estate representative here, he negotiated an extension on the lease for this building uh, to ensure that we have time to complete that loan process. After we'll the uh, state infrastructure bank for a loan. Yes. Yes. So once we have that recommendation on the property next door, we can either just turn our application in as is, or we can add that property to it. So, um, so we negotiated that, John negotiated that to ensure that we didn't run out of time on our lease. Uh, we successfully processed our two, our first two payrolls, uh, and we are now submitting safe work, workman's comp monthly reports. Um, had a few challenges with email still going to my old UCAN address. Uh, took a couple of weeks before they actually put a, if you want district, if you're trying to contact the district, contact Cheryl at this email address. Um, but that is actually the kickback now on that email box. Um, our name has officially been changed with the federal government. Uh, so we are now working with um, Club Bank to change our name on our bank account. Hey, uh, I noticed on uh, I noticed on Office that our address is still showing on Rose Street. It is. Okay. Where I'm working on it, the Optus seems to be incremental as far as what they get updated. Yeah, okay. um, and they've had some changes in personnel recently as well. 
So yeah, I'm just kind of knocking on that at each time I. If it's still that address in five years, we got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think some of it. Once the money gets to the bank account. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some of it because the grants are going to be written or uh, updated anyway um, for the July one transfer. I think that's probably when some of that will happen. Um, so let's see what else. Um, we did see receive the amendments, the signed amendments for UCAN's contracts that uh, allow us to go ahead and pay them out through the stiff funding for the projects that they did have, um, which project number three was mine and Christine's salaries. And then project five was the difference between what they were paying as a driver's wage and what they uh, increased that wage to. Uh, so we weren't able to pay those because we didn't have uh, the stiff funding actually put into the contract in such a way that allowed us to pay it out. Now it's fixed. All right. We also got the signed deeds with UCAN to sublease part of this property so we can legally have UCAN employees in the building. Um, and I already shared with you, we found the distributor for masks. Um, through that process of ordering new masks, masks, we went through and got our bank account set up for uh, pre-funded ACH and wire transfers. Uh, we worked with Mercy and Umpqua Homes. Uh, Umpqua Homes had a couple of vans that they were not using, and Mercy was uh, we were having to turn away a few rides. So they had a driver available and uh, UHH agreed to share their van. So now we have another van and driver that are working with Mercy a couple of days a week. Um, so that worked out well. Um, I provided comments on the draft reopening guidelines. Uh, what I did is I provided some scenarios that were specific to our area. Um, that uh, some of the things that are being suggested are if somebody's trying to get on your vehicle and they are sick and trying to get to the doctor or mercy or wherever, and um, that if they're sick, that we don't take them on the vehicle, um, decline to transport. And that we, at that point, then would be responsible to find another form of transportation. Um, for as rural as we are, that creates a few issues. Um, when you're looking at the scenario I provided is if we have a uh, client that's trying to get on the bus in Denver Creek, and uh, they're in a mobility device, and we tell them they can't ride, for them to be able to, um, to make it to Roseburg, say if they're going to Mercy, if the only provider is either Sunshine Taxi or Bay City that can transport the wheelchair. So um, you're looking at $80 each direction for those providers for that trip. And that becomes cost prohibitive if we uh, are, are having to provide a secondary option like that because we are so rural. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. Um, also the barriers in the vehicles. If, if the uh, language is so specific that even in dial ride vehicles, we have to have those barriers in order to provide the service. Um, and we can only have uh, one person, if you're socially distancing a vehicle, you can only trans or transport one person at a time or possibly two on a dial a ride vehicle uh, that would normally seat nine people. Uh, then that there again, the supply and demand uh, becomes the, there are more people to be transported than we possibly have drivers and vehicles to use to be able to do that. Uh, TriMet gave a really good example um, for where they are. He said that they could line the entire Hawthorne Street, and uh, right now they are at 70% less than what they normally run. So they're at 30% of their ridership right now, and that 
has already got them at 70% capacity because of the, the guidelines that they're enforcing in order to, it's a, an OSHA guideline at this point. Um, so they could line the entire Hawthorne Street and not have enough buses to transport if they have to continue with the, um, the social distance guidelines. So it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how that um, comes into play. So then going back to being able to refuse a ride for illness, mm -hmm. are we going to be if they don't have a test, what is that guideline? If someone sneezes, we can say, you know, I'm really not comfortable with you getting on here because it sounds like you could possibly be sick. Exactly, and for me, that concern is that could turn into civil rights. Uh, I mean, what is the guideline on that? I mean, there isn't one yet. We don't have one yet. Oh, okay. So yeah. we can't turn it down. Not yet. Or you yeah. can and go to court. Yeah. 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 So uh, you won't call me, I'll give them a ride. I, <laughs> I just want to take three of them. They have to go to the hospital. I'll give them a ride. <clears throat> so, I, <coughs> Jennifer, can I cut in really yeah, quick? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I do believe that something came out recently on the FDA website, and I'll search it out, um, that said that if somebody is visibly ill um, or presents the illness, the symptoms, that you can refuse the ride. Um, I will try to track that down because I think it just came out last week. Okay. That'd be great. All right, so um, Julie Brown uh, developed a policy for, it's a COVID policy uh, to adhere to reopening guidelines. And so she just shared that with me, uh, I wanna say Friday. And so then I go through that and cannibalize it, make it um, ours. And so we will have a policy to be able to reopen uh, officially, even though we're not closed, but to be able to meet the guidelines put forth by the state because having a policy is part of that. So do we need to approve that? I know the guidelines are coming up this time, but I think this week and phase one reopening is supposed to be maybe this Friday. I don't, I don't know if it applies at that date, but um, you know, rather than wait till next. It is a policy that you would need to approve. Um, I, I haven't finished my part of changing it to mm -hmm. Uh, up to date yet, and it's more than just changing the the name. Mm -hmm. There there are things that they do that don't apply to us, uh, and there are specific names in the policy that uh, instead of just a position. So there's there's a bit of work to do to make it. So will we need a special meeting? I guess this morning oh. on that to be able to approve it. In time to Same make the budget committee meeting. Right. <laughs> 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 I like the way you think. I like it, Mark. <laughs> That might be a really good idea, yes. Okay, okay. so yes, I'll, I'll get that out to you though as soon as I have it complete so that you can review it you know, before we ever get to the point of meeting. Um, and I, again, I'm, I researched the multiple plex barrier companies that, um, and so far I haven't had any luck, so still going there. Um, I have had multiple conversations with the um, the acting supervisor over at UTrans, um, just because there are so many changes and there are drivers that even if they reopen on Friday, they are in that age range where they um, are not going to feel comfortable putting themselves out into the, the general public yet. Uh, so uh, what does that look like? Um, we have thought that we were just going to hire uh, drivers through the district and the, you know, boom to, is it today? No, it was last week, would have been the day that we would have um, been able to just put those drivers in there to carry on. Um, but now there's that two month gap. So it's kind of, how do, how do we facilitate this? So currently UTrans as you can does not have enough drivers to reopen all of the routes um, the way that they were running prior to this hitting us. So uh, it's it's just a challenge. Uh, and then we've also discussed the fact that it doesn't seem uh, like it would be feasible to move some of UTrans operations here when they still have to go to the office down there for their connection to UCAN. 
to be able to log in and log their time and to get to the buses. So once the buses are here, then it makes sense to bring them here. So that, that's, that's that piece. Um, um, Charlotte, just a, a stick on the uh, Plexi barrier. I was wondering if you contacted, uh, can't think of the name of them. They do a lot of police services on uh, Rose and Oak Street. Um, police and different things who also have barriers and things in their cars. I'm just wondering if they have the ability to do anything for the buses or can replace them. Are you talking about mobile team? Mobile team. Yeah. yeah, I haven't thought about them. Yeah. Mm, so they might, they, they might be able to do something or fabricate something. Already have a relationship with them. Yeah, they're, yeah. <clears throat> we have a very good working relationship with them. Yeah. Um, so it, as far as retirement goes for the district, um, we've been looking into a 401k um, for whatever the reason. It was a real challenge getting across to the gentleman that I was talking to uh, that uh, we are not the same type of entity as UCAM. We really just wanted to set us up with exactly the same thing that UCAM had because I said comparable yeah. to. Um, so getting across to him that we were a government entity um, was kind of difficult. So then found out we do not qualify for 401k. There is um, another option, um, but it is self-funded. And then talking with Laura at uh, Nina Davidson, she suggested the SEP, which is a simplified employee pension plan. Um, nobody, including virtually everybody at this table recommends going with PERS, which is the other option that's available for uh, retirement. Mm. So the SEP would require that the, uh, that the board uh, pass a resolution as to what percentage of the employee salary that they wanted to put into um, the account. And the examples that I had were RVPD puts in 14% and Roberts Creek Water contributes 5%. So just food for thought, not something that we have to um, do something about today. They use the same retirement system or are they first? They're not first. They're not no, first. they're in they're they an SEP. I know. It is. Yeah, it's. I'm sitting by the bench and I'm starting to I was going to ask you if you can wait that little bit after. These windows don't open. Let me get in the people. Oh, so you can, if you're not using your own account, you can use the SEP. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, greater than the mileage you're trying to enter. So we um, back traced about a year and found where the uh, initial data entry was, and then they went ahead and, and corrected it because we couldn't go back in and open up Douglas County because none of us can uh, you know, make adjustments in their stuff. ODOT went ahead and did that for us. So um, I did provide the county creates the ridership and service data to Dennis as he is contracting to assist them. And we did provide a letter to ODAP to officially request the start of the transfer from UCAN to FTD. Yeah. Yes. So um, it's just it's kind of constant. There's always something going on. Does anybody have any questions? I'm glad you're able to focus all your time on the district. That makes a lot of stuff to makes it not have the split time and do any of the nutrient stuff anymore. So. so I'd like to know what's happening with the dial rise. So dial rise, um, we still have uh, two providers that are um, providing the basically the same level of service that they were before COVID hit, and that is UVDM and um, Mercy Express. And then Jennifer has also been self-dispatched. And so she decides which rise that she's able to take and prioritizes uh, those based on the need. So right now, those are the only ones that are open. Um, I Oh, no, wait. Winston and Sunrise opened back up this week. Uh -huh. Yes. So they are providing rides as well, but they are doing one person per vehicle. That's all it should be. Yeah. So um, that is one of those things that will uh, drop our ridership, which um, is, of course, a goal in our staff yeah, funding. Mm -hmm. I think that's understandable, though. Yes, yeah. and, that, and that's um, been stated at that level. People that are working and we were in Criswell going back to the kickback committee anyway to redo a lot of that. So um, the more um, research I do on that and going back through how we had originally approved the projects with every provider's name in it mm -hmm. and an amount. Um, when I know that I came back and let you guys know that there were changes that <coughs> were not required in order for the uh, application to go through, one of those changes was that I had every every provider was a different project, and so what they said is this is really one project you need to erase it, delete it all, start over. It's one project with different um, uh, same outcomes basically. That outcomes, one project. Yes. Um, and then after I did that, they came back and they said um, that I couldn't have the names of the providers in there. And so it, the various different outcomes say that we are going to increase ridership and this and that um, revenue service miles for Drain Young Kala area. And then there's also one for the Reedsport area and another one for uh, Roseburg and Sutherland and Winston and so and there are a couple of duplicates in there and so now I know you know um, we as the uh, the qualified entity have the ability to um, make those adjustments based on the need and what is happening um, we don't have to go back to the committee because the committee already approved the projects and moved them forward and they were approved by the board mm -hmm. and they're in the the application that was accepted. So so are we able to start paying out then places that have that have been providing that? Mm -hmm. that uh, yes. Yeah. There's really have only we two. paid anyone yet? There's other than you can, there's really only two right. that have been doing that. One is Mercy and the other one is Transport. So having mm -hmm. the um the language now for the amendment to the contracts. Um, that's the next step is to get their contracts amended as well. And so we can start paying that as well. Yeah. But I believe that what we need to consider is UVDN uh, needs to have a piece of that as well. 
there is more funding in there than we'll be able to use because <clears throat> we weren't able to pick up the projects because we didn't have the expansion vehicles. And so it's this just domino effect. Um, the expansion vehicles will be able to order July 1, um, because, well, four of them uh, yeah. that we got in the, the grants. So um, it's just a whole lot slower moving. And um, as I talk with folks with OTA and Jennifer, um, there are a lot of the rural areas that are moving much slower than we had anticipated because um, there's just so much to it. So yes, we're able to do that. Okay, so then NDD, since they did their expansion the first quarter, they should be able to get funding for that. They exceeded their hours and service mileage and all that, that should, do we need to? I would like to sit down and um, go over those numbers with you and, and okay. chat with you about that so that we're both on the same page. Okay. That'd be awesome, yeah. Yes. How are we with the Diorite Dispatchers and the Move and Sutherland and you can? So um, when we moved, um, it was the, you know, the, the shock of um, City of Sutherland declared an emergency and dispatchers had to leave the building like right now. And the City of Sutherland said we could bring in new dispatchers if they were uncontaminated. It didn't do the same for you. Uh, so that's why we did the hurry up quick, uh, figure out the phone system over here and we got Sharon set up over here. Um, the other two dispatchers um, opted to go a different course with UCAM and they are no longer employed with UCAM. So um, we are currently still running at a level of um, phone calls uh, that uh, one dispatcher can handle, um, but we are looking at hiring another dispatcher within like the next week, because as things open back up, there will be more, uh, more calls on them. So we only brought over one dispatcher from the Sutherland you can situation. Oh. The other two elected not to apply. Exactly. Elected not to apply. Okay. Uh -huh. um, are we going to get a driver line this year? So um, that is something that we need. Uh, Christine is a little more of an expert with the phone system than I am. And so we need to look at how we do that because this phone system is different. Um, when there's more than one dispatcher, what will happen is uh, if one dispatcher is on the phone, it will roll, roll to the next one. Yeah, but um, and the next one. The reason I ask is it's a safety for us as drivers. Um, I have to call from Dodge Sharon's very sweet. I have to call her cell phone so she can pick up. Because if you're on a phone, the phone line's not mm -hmm. going to prioritize a driver mm -hmm. call. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's times where we, I mean, it, we take priority over anyone else's calling and you put anyone on hold and you answer the phone and that's not happening because we don't have a driver's You have to have a dedicated, dedicated line. Yeah, we, we need that dedicated line and I'm not driving every day, but I drive, I'm driving frequently and it's frustrating and then to have to go through the whole phone tree, it's about, it's minimum three, three and a half minutes to even be able to get to the point to get to a dispatcher. So um, as you come into that phone tree, you can press the button immediately that you need. Okay, I haven't okay. memorized it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be nice though to have a separate one that didn't have yes. it, it just rang. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. well, and that, no. that's just a, a next the fat from um, that uh, we need to. Send all her direct, and she can put her membership on the phone. Oh, okay, so I knew she would have more information than me. <laughs> can I get the direct number? 900. I'm sorry, what was it? 671. Sorry, I can't hear very well. 9003. That's directly to Sharon's desk. And if she's on the phone, it's not going to. She has three lines on her phone. So then it'll roll to whatever one's open. It should, can, if she's on the phone, her phone will still ring. The only way it would go directly to voicemail is if she's got do not do not disturb that. So we got to have a bat phone. So. Eventually, are we going to get a driver's line? Are we looking at that? Or are we just that looking at your direct? You'll basically, for however many dispatchers we have, if I'm hearing correctly, you'll have three driver's lines. 
we have three dispatchers. If you dial 9003 and she doesn't pick up, um, then you'd be able to dial the next one or the next one. How well, would I know which one? Yeah. That's, so that's, then I would try just 9004 and then 9005. And, and you know, this is a operations <coughs> discussion that she can have with Verizon to better learn okay. the phone system and figure out how to make this happen. I can't answer the question because I'm not an expert on it. Can, can Jennifer talk okay, to so Christine? I would try to tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, when the guy with the hook is trying to break your window and you're trying to get a hold of dispatch, you need the dedicated. So, so, so just, I was just thinking maybe we could just work this offline. Yes. And, Perfect. And, and Jennifer, yes. she knows the questions I'll I think to ask. Or work with so or talk with Christine on. to let her know what right. they need. Work with Christine because so she's she the one that's Verizon. working with Verizon. Uh -huh. And some things Excellent. she can go into the computer and make changes. Uh -huh. I, I don't have that same kind of access and time to do that. Okay, just as long as it can happen is all. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's definitely something for a younger mind. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else for? Uh, not on agenda. No, not on agenda. Are we still on the? Manager, yeah. I'm done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, just to clarify things, I renegotiated our closing uh, date for, for this because of the, the loan process. Um, I haven't renegotiated the lease agreement, but uh, the other party has numerous times said no problem, no problem. Our lease is up on June 1st. June 1st. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to have this done by June 1st. No, we've extended the closing, which means that <coughs> they're going to want to get the lease. You can you can get it done as fast as you did the last one. Yeah. The date change. Yeah, I just have to do it at the end of the Okay. Jennifer, did you have anything to tell me? Yeah. So I was approached um, by South Lane to do a partnership with them on what John had. Sorry, go ahead. Wait. No, I was pointing at the spike. Go ahead. At the spider? No, it's by Keith Lynn. Oh, yeah. oh, anyway, um, I was approached by South Lane Wheels, um, Ruth, and then Mark Bernard, who's an RTC for that area. Yeah, um, about doing a partnership with them through North Douglas Betterment. Basically, what it is is a VA run to get our folks to the VA in Lane County and Douglas County. So it's actually what John had brought up um, a little bit ago. So. Of course, they would like the blessing of our district, and then they're running it through their um, lane um, just act committee as well. Um, it's a hundred thousand dollar project for the two years of the pilot, and um, so what it is is there'll be a destination in Drain that our van will be able to meet up with their partnership, whoever South Lane has there at the time, to be able to pick up residents from North Douglas County. To Cottage Grove, where they could get off or mm -hmm. get on and get more people, and then to um, Amtrak, to the VA. There was one other stop, and I can't remember it off the top of my head. And then coming back, they're going to hit Cottage Grove again, hit Drain again, go up to, to Roseburg to VA, by Drain, Sutherland, VA, and a few other places in town. Um, and then again on the way back, and it would be twice a week that we'd be able to make those connections up and down I 5 to get people to Lane. Douglas. Um, That's so is it for veterans only or for, is it open? It is um, preference to veterans because it's a veterans run. So it's a VA run, mm -hmm. but other people can board if it's not full of veterans. Um, and the, so basically the deadline for the grant is the 15th of this month. So I've done my part um, as I was asked as North Douglas Veteran was approached by South Lane Wills, I've already done everything on my end that needed to be done. I spoke with Ruth and South Lane's Cheryl. Um, so now we have three days to get somebody from us to write the letter. I don't think that we're to the point now to where tonight you have, to, Jennifer, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think we have to get it approved tonight, correct? Um, I don't know that there's actually even an approval that has to come. It's just that, um, my understanding from Mark, yeah, as we'll I talked to Mark this weekend, um, was that they are just looking for the blessing of the board to put in this application and partner with one of your entities. Well, shouldn't it be in writing? 
I think that's fine. I think what Doug Zetterman is the proper mm -hmm. yeah, right there. That's pretty, yeah. And they asked us. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know who these people are. They yeah. approached um, me, um, and it actually just came about kind of last minute, um, maybe the past like five days, five or six days. Mm -hmm. I would week. think for grant. Do we want to just put it on the record in our minutes mm -hmm. from this meeting? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. That way yeah. they have a document we to submit for support. It sounds like there's consensus amongst the board. I don't know that we know, but it sounds like there's consensus that that's the right thing to do. Would you like me to go ahead and provide the letter? Um, Jennifer, does Cheryl need to provide a letter? Sure. If she can, I think it would be great to yes. show that the board yes. is in support yes. and you could. Um, you can either send it to me or to Mark Bernard because he's the one that's actually putting in the application for North Step or for South Lake Neal. Okay. Mark uh, did contact me as well. I almost forgot about it um, to participate on a committee to review the upcoming master yeah. plan for South Lane County. So um, you're allowed. We'll allow. So what? We'll allow that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Only if you read your email. Yeah. I sent you an as long email. As you send it you to the right it? address. So. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> it's the Martian address I sent it to this week. Huh? Did you send me one this week? Yes, I did about that thing we talked about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah, I haven't got it yet. I'm still you looking for it. Please. They're digging and they haven't found it yet. I see. Really? It. They're digging? Yeah, they can't find it. It was from the 80s, mid 80s. So. It should be on microfiche or something. No kidding. <laughs> I've seen it. It's a, it's a, the agreement is literally about that way. But you can't just look at that. I would have thought so. But I so somebody my, in your office, got, more than one somebody is looking for this. I've got thing. my staff looking at it up and saying, well, thank you. Too, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mike, uh -huh. I, I also have something that's not on the agenda that just came up um, today. Regarding your guys' transfer of, um, of your grant. Um, so one of the grant agreements, the 5310 that has the purchase service on it, um, it is restricted funding and can only be used for purchase service. There's a couple different buckets of money that 5310 has. There's the federal funds and then there's also some state 5310, which we um, do a, a fund exchange. The funding that is um, funding your grant for that specific grant um, does not allow anything but the purchase service or capital project. It won't allow operations. Um, so what that means is there's two projects, one for the uh, call center, the Sutherland call center, which was funded to uh, UCAN. And then the other project, which is the UCAN um, uh, Cheryl, is it the paratransit or is it yes. um, dial a ride for UCAN? Paratransit. paratransit. Yeah. So those two projects, um, the funding <coughs> doesn't go away. Uh, it can be transferred to some of your other projects, but it can't be used for anything but purchase service. Okay. So um, and so one of the things to look at. Um, for that is that um, you know we can't um, <coughs> that funding can't be used by the district itself. It would have to do purchase service to utilize that fund. So if there are ways to transfer that over to UVDN or North Douglas or Mercy um, within their projects, if they have additional costs or doing some kind of a transfer from some of your other funds. Um, to fund operations, um, then that would be something that we'd need to look at. Um, and I just found out about this. So. And, and, yeah. and Jennifer, is that just for this next year uh, till that contract expires? Correct. And then we wouldn't have a contract and then we wouldn't have that problem. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. So we do have a couple of providers that consistently um, provide a, a spreadsheet that shows that their expenses are greater than uh, what their allocation is. So uh, I, I believe we did. Okay, well, we'll work through it. We have to, yeah. we'll work through it. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. The only th thing I had was um, so as we're preparing to take over in July, uh, we're looking at fleet services. So a contract that we're going to need, maybe an RFP for fleet services or for, or maybe it's just individual contracts so, with transit and 
a lift and this and that. And we can always make it a dream center boat. Yeah. Right. So currently we have um, the part of our um, preventive maintenance process mm -hmm. is the transit supervisor determines um, based on the type of vehicle and what type of service needs to be done as to uh, what uh, provider it goes to. So preventive maintenance for one size size vehicle goes to VNS Automotive over in Winston. There, I would, I'm just kind of wondering if there's opportunities to combine some of those, you know, they can work on some larger ones and some other ones. Some of these places you know, like Mobile Tune, that, that, not necessarily Mobile Tune, but, but just, you know, somebody that does fleet, you know, does all fleets and so they do different types of equipment. Well, so you travel further. Sodi does our larger vehicles mm -hmm. uh, and then we have somebody else that works on the lifts now. Uh, so it's it's kind of hit and miss. I guess it sounds like we don't. It's not something we need to deal with right now. But, not quite uh, yet, okay. um, but we do need to do because we are the district. Um, we will need to do an RFP and uh, just do that fair mm -hmm. uh, and open solicitation. Base. Yes. Okay. Any other NOAs? I would like for the next meeting, if we could reach out to Sherry and John. On agenda bill? No, I'm not on agenda. Okay. Good night. Well, that's one next meeting. Next agenda meeting. bill is next meeting. No, before next meeting. Oh, well, this isn't part of the agenda. I'd just like to reach out to John and Sherry, okay. uh, have them come in so we can make a group photo, uh, take a group photo <laughs> of the oh, first, uh, I know. Uh, I, I mentioned this when we were at the DFW. I think um, it's a good idea. To have a group photo so we can start the, the process of future I avoid those, so I will not participate. It's not mandatory, but it, it, I, I would like to, to have it be that. I think it's a good idea. If you want to participate, participate. If you don't, stand to the yeah. side. But I, I just think we might want to have yeah. two different two different sets. In I that. thought about that, but then the future ones are going to want to do that with everybody who resigns and appoints. <laughs> yeah. Blah, blah, blah. If you want yeah. to everybody. I don't have any objection if you want to reach out and contact them, John, and, and your staff. So. Yes, and we can take it with a again. cell phone and I'll get it printed yeah. and whatnot if, we have, if I have to, but I just thought it would be nice. And then also, um, for when we get out of this stupid corona, I asked months and months ago again to inform Q, uh, Nameplates, not necessarily with our personal names. It'd be cool if we did, but at least director one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that way, when we have people in the audience or watching from Zoom or whatever, they know who's talking. Oh, you the names. So they know who to blame. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, again, you know, name plates. Name plates. Just with, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was all. Right. Any other noise? Okay. Agenda bill. We've got uh, we budget. We're going to talk about committee members. Uh, and a resolution policy and policy on uh, unpaid leave. Is it, was there anything else? Is there Come any in. other committee policies? Yeah, FAQs, if you've got those. Retirement. Retirement, yeah. If we allow a retirement. Yeah, what the, you what with the percentage is. If you can't well, have retirement. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta stay forever. What's retirement? Okay, yeah. Anything else? All right, it is 7.43 and we're adjourned. Thank you, Jennifer. I'll call the damn kid and tell him I'm coming up. <laughs> I want to ride home from his friend's house. Uh, now, that what that was? By now I could have walked. Oh, that's funny. Sounds like he has anxiety. No, he just doesn't want to walk up to 21% grade. Oh, I had to do that. I had to do that.